So you mentioned uh, some of the, infor the information that you have access to through your market research is, is quite specialized. How, how do you go about obtaining, obtaining that information? Um, first of all, we've built uh, our company based on trust. So a lot of people that uh, share information with us know exactly what we will be doing with that information, how we will channel that information, and how it will be communicated to other people, other companies. Um, so I think trust was a very important aspect. So today I would say the Misco brand is a very reputable brand. Uh, more, so if you mentioned Misco, people would know uh, which company you are referring to. So that has helped us in, in obtaining a lot of information mm. and a lot of uh, sensible and uh, uh, important data of our clients that they are trusting it in our hands to use it but not communicate it to their competitors or to anyone without uh, making sure that it is not uh, obvious who the client is. Mm. Let me explain. Uh, one of our services is uh, in the business advisory unit that we produce a salaries and benefits report. So most uh, positions in Malta fit into this report and we publish a report uh, eventually every year uh, in October with the, the salaries uh, for the a list of over 40 positions if I'm not mistaken. And the positions would have a lower quarter and median upper quarter fringe benefits and we obtain this information obviously when uh, p companies that give us this, uh, this information uh, can access this information at a discounted rate uh, but then others that do not participate can buy the report at the full fee and obviously this gives you a clear indication of what salaries you should be paying what salaries are being paid in the local market and trying to make sure that you are uh, paying the salaries where you want to be. Some mm. companies want to be paying at the upper quarter. Most companies would prefer to be somewhere around the median. Mm. Uh, but definitely, uh, peace of mind for those companies that supply us with all this information, and this goes into the hundreds uh, of companies, so thousands of, of, of uh, positions, um, that they can put their mind at rest that once we have that information, it will remain at our company. We will not be saying company X is paying this and that. Yeah. So with that kind of um, that kind of knowledge that, and reputation that you've built up, um, you, you're now um, diversifying into some some other different areas. So so what what are those those different kind of they're, they're actually uh, new companies that are being spun out of the Misco brand. Yes, uh, we started off with four different areas. Business advisor was one of them, where we also uh, offer consultancy services. A second area was uh, learning and development, so it's training to other companies, uh, mainly focusing on soft skills, mm -hmm. from management programs, even accredited programs, to very junior programs like customer care. We also have uh, a recruitment agency, so we do mainly recruitment, local recruitment. We do have some international recruitment, but most of it is focused on the local uh, business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and fourth, uh, but not least, is marketing research. We do a lot of marketing research. Uh, we, have, we do very large surveys, such as the Eurobarometer for Malta. Um, so uh, most of that business is uh, actually coming from uh, foreign uh, companies, from for foreign countries that want to do market research in Malta. Right. That was, those are our uh, four main areas under the MISCO umbrella. However, MISCO then ventured into other businesses, uh, such as um, uh, Impetus, it's Impetus Europe Consulting Group, which focuses on EU funding. We established this company a few uh, years before Malta joined the EU to help local businesses uh, and uh, local agencies to tap into EU funding. We also uh, set up a joint company with uh, a number of accountants. The company is called 3A. So we have um, accountants and services. And now we are looking into uh, marketing, but focusing on marketing strategy. Right, OK. And th that, that's interesting because um, you mentioned about some of these new areas, but then also um, some of the information that you've got from your, your salary survey it, um, 
having access to this sort of data plus various different areas of industry such as accounting and marketing you must have a good overview on the sort of trends in Malta generally. Um, have, you, have you noticed anything that's possibly changed in the past couple of years, maybe the, the effect of the recession? Um, ha have people become more loyal, at, at, you know, staying with companies for longer, or have salaries changed perhaps? Let me start off with the answer whether people have been more loyal. Um, despite the recession, our recruitment business during the recession continued to grow. So there were still a number of uh, recruitment uh, positions taking place, uh, appointments. However, one would be very cautious before deciding to move on to a different uh, position or whether to recruit someone new. Um, when, when you look at salaries, however, salaries most salaries did not grow exponentially over the recession period except for some specialized positions or some uh, specific industries. If we take the finance industry as an example, salaries are still uh, continually increasing every year. Mm. Uh, the main reason behind that is that the pool of finance people around is small and the, the, the demand is very high. So people are uh, chasing the same amount of people um, so obviously salaries are continually on the increase. Eventually we'll reach a point where once we'll start considering actually uh, getting people from other countries where uh, once our positions, our salaries reach those of other EU countries so then the pool of candidates will once again grow. Mm. Okay. Well, if you had to just think of a couple of key benefits of, of working in Malta, um, especially compared to some other local countries, uh, what, what, what would you immediately think of as some of the, the, the major benefits here? Um, first of all, we, uh, we speak English, so English is a, one of the benefits of uh, using Malta or Maltese people mm -hmm. um, to offer a service because we start learning English from day one. So English is part of our culture. Uh, so using the Maltese would definitely make it cheaper than uh, sometimes to using uh, the Brits on the same service. Let me give you a, a specific example of what I mean by this. HSBC opened a call center in Malta. It was definitely cheaper using the Maltese um, uh, in the, a, a local call center offering services, however, to UK. I believe this was also the case when HSBC initially had opened a number of call centers in India. However, the way the Maltese speak English and the way the Indians speak English, it was much easier for, for the Brits to understand a Maltese speaking uh, person, uh, sorry, a Maltese speaking English rather than an Indian. So there are these tangible benefits plus our proximity. Uh, to other European countries. Definitely the Maltese are very, very hard working. I would say that I've worked with a lot of other uh, people coming from different countries, so I'm not saying that other people are not uh, as hard working as the Maltese. But mm. at least you know that the Maltese are hard working as well. Yeah. So employing Maltese would give you certain peace of mind. Obviously, there are characters, there are different people. Uh, I'm not uh, generalizing, uh, we have to look at, at, at the specific individual. But that's also uh, another benefit. Plus, we obviously are part of the European Union, so there are a number of tax-related benefits of operating with Malta or in Malta uh, for other countries that are also within the European Union. 